Welcome to Roadworthy-ish. In this episode, we're going to be putting the 2024 livery on my dragon. Um, we're going to go with a vintage race car look. I always loved that. And I found some inspiration in the um, uh, Jägermeister style German race cars, if you remember them. Also a lot of Japanese details on this from the touring car series when they raced back in the 70s. But um, for now, let's get started on getting this thing raced up. Alright, to get started, I have an idea on the design that I want. So I draw it up in Silhouette Design, which is a program for this uh, Camille uh, cutter, plotter. I don't know what's called, vinyl cutter. You can get them in different sizes, but these are ideal for the home uh, do-it-yourself project style. Then when everything is cut, I bring it up to the car, um, I measure up where I want it, and then we start to get the final measurement. and. From there on, it's just a matter of applying and getting it exactly where you want. On these decals that I need to move around a little bit, I always use uh, water, uh, just regular tap water on the um, on the glue side of the of the vinyl. That makes it uh, easy to move around. And then when you're done, it's just like squeezing out the air and you just squeeze out the remaining water and the adhesive uh, will just stick just like if they were put there without water. So that's a little uh, trick. I don't know if I haven't seen so many people using it, but I always do it like that when it's uh, stickers that I need to move around. Also to make sure that they don't apply and stick uh, <laughs> when you just put them on there, then you can't get them off. So. Again, as always, when you're putting on decals, make sure everything is cleaned up nicely and then try putting it somewhere, having a look at it where you want it. I don't go from a, a set design when I'm doing this, um, at least not right now. A lot of times you could just do a rendering and then follow the rendering. That will give you a pretty good idea of what you need. But for this, I'm just winging it. I have the ideas in my head, I think. And from there on, it's just a matter of getting everything placed and getting it down on the car. Again, you see me applying some tape. That is just to make sure that the, on the hood like this, it's centered 100% because that's gonna show. Um, so I put on tape as to know where to, to have the outline. Alright, for the rear of the car, I've chosen these NGK spark plug um, signs because this is very period correct. They ran them on uh, a lot of cars in the Japanese touring car championships over the years. And this being a 71, I have uh, found a lot of pictures of that exact year of cars. And not all of them, but a lot of them run these uh, decals just like this. The, the text where it says uh, spark plugs on the decal was added later. So this is the more period correct uh, for, I think, for, for the car. So also these were cut uh, on the machine. I just put on um, 
some other backing so I can move them like this that is transparent and when you have it exactly the way you want again apply get the water out and pull off the backing And again, having a look at everything, other side is done, going over it, what I would like. I think the coloring is just perfect with this, I don't want to go too crazy, um, because I like the orange, so I just want to have some decals that will complement that. Moving on to the front, I have a selection of stickers that needs to go on there. This is what I've cut out and made. These are also very cool, those who know, know. So on the front I'm gonna be running these Mikuni from the carbs and this Sparko from seat belts and steering wheel and stuff like that. Then I have a lot of original emblems that's gonna go on at some point. This is just about building up the layers. So again, putting it where I want it to be. And this is also a decal that was cut and put together um, and then put on uh, adhesive clear backing so that you can put it on just like a regular sticker. And again, the other side, rinse and repeat. And this car hasn't been cleaned <laughs> since it was painted last year, so this has been soaking in some hot soap water to get all the bugs off. And after a good clean and dry, it's time to place the stickers that I want for the front. And again, I've tried to do this the most period correct way with finding the files or just pictures uh, and then making my own files for the stickers. So I have this yellow tint, again a lot of cleaning. Then you pull off the backing, put the adhesive side on the light and you can get these on eBay or any part store then you apply it uh, as good as you can on the front do it with a heat gun also to get the uh, the contours then when it's set then you do the sides the corners again applying heat always point the heat gun away from your car when you're not using it that being done you get out a sharp razor, cut all the way around. And last step is that there is a protective film so you don't scratch it. You pull that off, put on the bezel, and that is basically it. Yellow tints. Alright, for the rear window, I have chosen to go with this old school Liberty Walk uh, Pandem. This was also made from, uh, from a picture I found. And important is to get it lined perfectly. And again, water, lots of it, so we can move it around and get it exactly where we need it. My experience is when using this technique on glass, um, 
it tends to hold the water much better than it does on paint. So sometimes you need the sticker to just rest when it's put on, get all the water out and then leave it for some hours before you pull off the backing because otherwise the sticker is not going to stick on the glass like it does on paint. And this old guy, the safety drive, is um, this is the Tokyo Rubber Company. All cars had this on in the 70s, basically when they drove in the, in the touring car classes. And just like that, with those few simple modifications, stickers and decals, the cars transformed from regular old school classic to this race car style old school classic. Yeah, you know what I mean. The only thing left is the few last items on the checklist. Um, after the cooling system was updated, we now need to get the gauges uh, working in the car and also the last few interior bits. We need the uh, the cowl from underneath the, uh, the steering column because that won't fit now that we have uh, put in an electrical steering column. But otherwise it is looking fresh. If you like this video remember to subscribe and like, leave a comment, that helps with getting more followers so I can do more content like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.